Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCAE, and creator of the CCNA Writing and Switching Version 3 Complete Video Course. And when I was first reading through the list of topics on the CCNA Writing and Switching Version 3 exam, one topic that really jumped out at me was the APIC EM Path Trace ACL Analysis Tool. That's a very long name for a very new feature. And in this video, we're going to see how we can use that tool to do some troubleshooting of our networks when it comes to access control lists. Stay tuned. In this video, we want to take a look at how to use the APIC EM Path Trace ACL Analysis Tool. That's one of those very specific exam topics that shows up on the list of exam topics for the CCNA or the ICND2 exam. We want to see how to use that. And if you want to get your hands dirty and play with it yourself, it's available out at the Cisco DevNet site, as we discussed in the previous video. It's not one of those always on labs, though, where we can just get immediate access to it. We've got to reserve it. So I've already got a reservation set up so that we could save a bit of time. And we would say get started. And this is the lab that I'm on right now. Notice it says currently reserved by me. I went into this APIC EM Hardware Mini Lab 1. I'm running version 1.2 of the APIC EM software. That's a requirement. You've got to have at least version 1.2. The setup is a little bit more challenging than what we had in the previous video. You've got to have a VPN session going in to the DevNet site. And they give you some information about how you get your VPN client downloaded. I've got the VPN client for Mac running uh, that Cisco gives us. And uh, after your reservation is ready, it takes about 30 minutes or so to set up the reservation. You get an email that tells you your VPN credentials and you get connected via the VPN. And finally, you're, you're in here in this environment. And I've got these two routers and I've got these two switches. I've got a Linux host down here as well. Here's my APIC up here. And uh, we can also check out IP address information, username and password information for the different routers and switches. And what we want to do right now is go over to our APIC EM and let's do a discovery. Let's say that we want to discover the topology. We need to discover the topology so that it can synthetically estimate what's going to happen when we try to get from point A to point B in the network. In order to set this up, we need to have CDP and SNMP and our CLI credentials specified. I'm going to use, let's see, I'll call this test four, and I'm going to use CDP. I could specify a range of IP addresses. I'm just going to use CDP. I'm not going to do any subnet filtering. I'm not going to mess with the CDP levels here. I do have to specify SNMP credentials, and I've already got these specified on my devices. For I'm going to be using SNMP version two, and my read community string is CCENT. My write community string is CCNA. Let's put in my username credentials, admin, and I'll put the password in. I don't have an enable password set on this equipment, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, I think we're good. I'm going to specify the IP address here of my router that's sitting there in the middle. Let's go check out its IP address. 10.10.20.73. So I'll specify 10.10.20.73. And I'll say that I want to start the discovery. Now, while the discovery is going on, let's go over and let me show you how I set this up. I had to enter some SNMP commands on my routers and switches. Let's do a show run pipe to include SNMP. I entered these three commands on each of my routers and switches. CCNT as the read-only community string and CCNA as the read-write community string. And let's see how our discovery is going. It says it's just now starting the scan. Give it a few moments. And it is a requirement that we do the discovery before we can do the, the path trace analysis. Otherwise, it's not going to know how to trace the path. It says we have success. That's excellent news. So I'm going to go over to my path trace tool, and I'm going to start a new path trace. I'm going to see if I can get from my 3560X switch to my 3750X switch. Can I go from my 3560X, this is my egress interfaces IP address, into my 3750X? Here's its ingress interface. 
And because I'm using version 1.2 or later of the APIC EM software, I can do an ACL trace. That's what I want to do for exam preparation. Let's do a start trace. Can I get from the 3560 to the 3750 or the 3750X? Yes, it says that is successful. Fantastic. Let's do this. Let's go over to that actual switch. Let's go over to my 3560. Let's confirm that I can ping the 3750X switch. Can I ping 10.10.20.70? Yes, I can. Can I tell that to it? Let's try to tell that to 10.10.20.70. And that works. I'll get logged in real quick. And then I'll bounce back to my 3560. Well, it looks like no access list is standing in the way right now. Let's change that. Let me remind you of the topology. I'm trying to go from this switch to this switch, and I'm going through this router. What I'm going to do is go to this ingress interface on the router, and I'm going to apply an access control list that's going to block telnet traffic. It's going to allow everything else, but it's going to block telnet traffic coming from this switch going to this switch. Then let's do our ACL trace analysis and see how things might change. Let's go over to our router and let's get into global configuration mode and let's set up an extended IP access list. I'm going to say IP access hyphen list extended and I'm going to call this, we'll call it APIC hyphen EM. And I want to deny TCP traffic going from a host of 10.10.20.66 going to a host of 10.10.20.70 if the TCP port number equals 23. That's telnet traffic. I want to permit everything else though. Remember that implicit deny any any at the bottom? I'm going to say permit IP any any. Let's apply this to the interface as the 3560 switch is going into the router. Let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 and I'll say IP access hyphen group, APIC hyphen EM in the inbound direction. Now let's go back to our switch. Can I still ping my 3750X? Yes, I can ping it, but I should not be able to tell that to it any longer. Can I tell that? No, it says the destination is unreachable. All right, let's go back to our APIC EM again and let's do another trace. Let's do a path trace. I'm gonna say that I wanna trace from my 3560X my egress interface to my 3750X. There's my ingress interface. But this time I'm gonna specify a destination port of 23 and a protocol of TCP. And I'm gonna do an ACL trace. So I'm testing if Telnet will get from my 3560X to my 3750X. Let's do a start trace. And by the way, if you do this too quickly, it might still work. Maybe we haven't pulled it again since we last ran it. But here it looks like it is showing the results we expected. Look at this. Previously, this was a successful trace, but now, because we said we want to trace ACLs, it's saying that, no, we have an issue going into our router right here, and we can even view the matching access control list. It tells us the, it tells us the actual ACL entry. It says that we're denying traffic from this host to this destination if the port number is Telnet. Wow. So that's being very specific about why something is failing. Do you see the power of using this? This is the power of using the APIC EM path trace ACL analysis tool when doing troubleshooting if you're in a fairly complex environment and there are several access control lists and you're not quite sure where to look next because you might have to check 10 different routers to figure out what's going on to see if you have any ACL matches. But here, we just have everything discovered within the APIC enterprise module and then we say do a trace and it goes out there and it tells us whether or not traffic should get through or not. And if it should not get through, it drills down and tells us exactly why. Well, that's a look at the APIC EM Path Trace ACL Analysis Tool. If you want to learn even more about Cisco routing and switching technologies, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen, and I'll send you more training videos. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.